Lastly, I just want to cover two signaling pathways in um, just a little bit of detail. Um, the first one is the Jack Stats pathway. Now, I like the Jack Stats pathway because it's a very simple signaling pathway and it builds upon the knowledge we already have from looking at these um, receptor towers in kinases. Okay, so the um, Jack Stat pathway we're going to look at is um, like a two part signaling pathway that consists of um, this receptor molecule and these transcription factors. And basically, they signal from the plasma membrane directly into the nucleus. So um, we have these um, Janus kinase activities. Um, so we have these receptor, um, receptors in the plasma membrane that don't have an intrinsic kinase like the receptor towers in kinases, but they associate with a kinase. Okay? So it's like a receptor towers in kinase but the kinase is a separate protein that associates with the receptor. Okay? And the, these, these receptors are functionally the same as towers and kinase receptors. The growth signal um, causes the dimerization. The associated ki towers and kinases causes transphosphorylation leading to um, phosphorylation of the cytoplasmic tails and that then leads to the binding of something and that something is the stats so it's a very simple pathway activated receptor binds transcription factor so these um, stats proteins stat stands for signal transducer and activation of transcription so s t a t stats okay so these stats proteins are transcription factors and they just simply bind to the, the receptor. So here's our, um, our receptor. It's not a receptor towers in kinase because it doesn't have intrinsic, as in within the chain. It doesn't have a towers in kinase within the chain, but it associates with towers in kinases, such as the Jack kinase. And then you get um, trans autophosphorylation of the receptor based on signaling molecule. So signaling molecule brings them together, these um, tyrosine kinases then autophosphorylate each other, leading to the activation and leading to phosphorylation of the tyrosine um, residues on the cytoplasmic tails. So it's very similar to tyrosine kinases but it's a different, um, different receptor and it's a simple receptor because what binds to these um, phosphorylated tyrosines are not adapter proteins leading to RAS. It's nothing to do with that. It's transcription factors directly. So these transcription factors, these signal transduction activator of transcription proteins, they bind to phosphorylated um, receptors and then they get phosphorylated and these two transcription factors can dimerize. Okay, so you can see here they've got SH2 domains to bind to a phosphorylated tyrosine and they get phosphorylated on their tyrosines. So now you can get this simple system where the, the phosphorylated stat proteins can form this dimer. And this dimer then moves to the nucleus and turns on gene, exp gene expression. So it's a, it's a nice simple signaling pathway which builds upon our knowledge of the receptor towers in kinases. Okay, so the stats become phosphorylated by these jacks and then the stats also um, have SH2 groups and phosphorylated tyrosines so they can bind to each other to form these dimers which migrate and turn on gene expression. So it's a nice simple system of gene activation through um, a receptor. And the last signaling pathway I'm just going to mention because they're an important category of receptors, but we're not going to cover them in any detail whatsoever. But I think it's important that you're aware that they exist. Okay, so we're just going to mention to you very quickly these G protein coupled receptors. Okay, and 
They're important in various cancers too. So this is a G protein coupled receptor. It's not a dimer of two tyrosine kinases. It's a single protein. Um, remember how the tyrosine kinases are a single pass? They pass through the membrane once. Well, this protein passes through the membrane seven times. Okay, snakes through the protein. It's also called a serpentine because it, it people think it looks like the Loch Ness monster because it snakes up and down. Now, this receptor has its own um, guanine exchange factor as part of its domain. So it, it's a guanine exchange factor. So the growth factor activates the guanine exchange factor. In this case, it doesn't activate RAS, which is a monomeric G protein. It activates the alpha subunit of a heterotrimer. Okay, so again, it's a bit similar but different. We've got not RAS, but a G protein, which is bound to GDP, and it's part of a complex. Now, when it picks up the signal, the guanine exchange factor becomes activated. It causes nucleotide exchange within this molecule here. Okay, so the heterotrimer splits into two bits. This one is now activated. All right, and then that leads to cell signaling. All right, and we're not going to cover these pathways, but um, the um, the G protein in its active form um, can activate various um, signaling, small signaling molecules leading to the activation of cyclic AMP, which is a small signaling molecule. Um, and then also it can, it can um, lead to RAS activation in a way that we're not going to talk about. Okay? Now, the other part of this heterotrimer um, can also be involved in signaling pathways as well. So we're not going to talk about this in any detail, but it's important to know that um, an awful lot of the receptor molecules we have in our plasma membranes are these G protein coupled receptors, and these are the G proteins to which they are coupled. And it's a bit like RAS, but it's not a monomeric G protein, it's part of a trimer. And again, it's activated by nucleotide exchange, leading to different pathways and different, um, different pathways are activated. And again, a lot of these proteins here are proteins which um, are considered to be oncoproteins or tumor suppressor proteins and um, are important in cancer. All right, I think that's it. So thank you for listening.